Hey everyone, this is Isabel from the Cognito Forms team. In this video, I'm going to show you how to import your entry data into Cognito Forms using an Excel template. This feature is really useful when you need to consolidate entries from multiple forms, when you're moving entries to Cognito Forms from another form builder, or when you need to populate a lot of data for lookup fields like a product inventory. You can also use this feature to update existing entry data in bulk. So without further ado, let's jump in. For this example, I'm working with two forms, an order form and a product inventory form. The first thing I want to do is populate the product inventory form with my list of products. To do this, I'm going to head straight to the Entries page, select the Actions option, then choose Import. The process of importing entry data involves three steps. First, you'll download the Excel template for your form, then you'll fill in that template with your data, and finally, you'll upload the document here to populate the form entries. To get started, I'm going to go ahead and download my template. You'll see the first row of the template includes all of the internal field names on the form. In my case, I have columns for product inventory ID, product name, price, quantity available, entry status, and entry date submitted. Because I'm importing new entries, I don't have to provide data for every column. Right now, I'm only going to insert data for the product name and the price. And I'm just going to leave the rest of the columns blank. Once I'm finished adding my data, I'll save my document and go back over to the Entries page to upload it. By default, importing this document will create a new entry for each row. The other option is to update existing entries, which won't work in this case because we don't have any entries yet, and we didn't specify any entry numbers in the ID column. With everything in place, I'm going to hit the Import button to start importing my entries. The importing process could take a while depending on how much data you're trying to import, so feel free to leave the page. Once the import is done, you'll receive an email notification letting you know. As you can see, each row in my document just became a new entry. Before you start importing entries yourself, keep in mind that imported entries will count towards your organization's entry limits. Also, Importing entries does not trigger any notifications or integrations associated with the form. Now that I've imported my entry data, let's just say I need to update some of the product prices. Updating entries directly from the Entries page is easy enough, but you can update entries in bulk much faster using the Import option. To begin, I'm going to select Actions and export my existing entry data using the All Fields option. Now you can see that the Entry ID column is already populated with all the entry numbers. For this example, I'm just going to update a few of the product prices and then import the entry data using the same process as before. This time, however, I'm going to select Update Entries when Entry IDs match before hitting Import. Please be careful when you're updating your entries because once the entries are updated, the previous versions cannot be restored. You may want to save a copy of the original export just in case. That way, you can easily import the old data back in. As you can see, my import successfully updated with the new prices. Now that was easy enough, but sometimes an import may not be successful. For example, let's open up our template and try inputting text as a price value. When errors occur during an import, you can download an annotated file to see what went wrong. In this case, we tried to insert a text value into a currency field, which obviously won't work. Therefore, this row was skipped during the import. There are different reasons why an import may not be successful. For example, internal field names in the first row have to match the exact field names on your form. Otherwise, those columns will be skipped. It's for that reason that I recommend using the pre-generated templates from Cognito Forms rather than trying to create your own form from scratch. So now that I've entered my product inventory details, I can use a lookup field on my order form to pull in all the product names and associated prices. And of course, this list will update automatically when I update the entries in my inventory form. While we're on the topic of lookup fields, I should mention that the process of importing lookup field data, along with person fields, repeating sections, and table data, is slightly different from other field types. If you're familiar with Cognito Forms, you know that lookup fields, person fields, repeating sections, and table field data is included in a different worksheet within the Excel file. So, 
when you import repeating data, the data needs to be contained in its own worksheet with both an entry ID and an item ID column. The entry ID column needs to match up with an entry in the main worksheet, and the item ID column needs to be unique. For the lookup field value, you'll use the display name of your value. In my case, I created my own product codes, so I'll enter one of those here. Or I could enter the entry number associated with the value, such as 5, which would be the fifth product on my inventory form. After importing this test entry into our order form, we can see the repeating data we entered here. You'll notice this entry includes both products we entered on the second sheet of our workbook. If you'll remember, we entered our product display name as A0001 for the first product and the entry number 5 for our second product. That's about all we're going to cover in this demonstration, but if you're looking for more information, you can check out our user guides at cognitoforms.com support or feel free to submit a support request.